We're in the skeletal system one. Your body have two O6 bones. Uh, children has more because a lot of bones fuse together. So this system uh, is mainly we talk about the bones and also the cartilage, the soft bones. And between bone and bone we call the joint and the ligament, the duct tape, uh, connect bone to bone. So bone is the organ because you have more than one kind of tissue together. So if I give you a bone, it's, it's an organ. And the bone tissues, you have the compact bone and the spongy bone. And inside the bone, you also have the nervous tissue, the blood vessel. So you break your bone, you, you bleed a lot. Also have the cartilage and epithelium tissue cover the bones, the outside and the inside. The functions of the bones, uh, we can put them into different shape. So they have different function, like the flat bone is mainly for protection. And it also support protection. So this part, uh, movement, it work together with the, with the muscular system for movement. Hemopoiesis, not homeostasis. Homeostasis is to maintain a stable environment. Hemo, hemo means blood. Hemopoiesis is to produce blood. So in the bone, in the bone marrow, you have the red bone marrow. That's where the red blood cell is produced. Also mineral storage in the bone, the, the bone matrix is uh, mainly the calcium and phosphate group. Energy storage, so in the bone marrow, this time it's the yellow bone marrow, that's for energy storage. The bones can be divided into different shape. So we put those, those 206 bones into different shapes. Uh, if they, they have the long structure, not long distance. So you can have a very short, long bone, like your finger, your flanges. These are the long bones, so based on the shape. And if they are flat, we call them flat bone, and, uh, and you have the short bone. If it, it does not belong to these three, we call them irregular. So totally four different kinds of shapes, bones. And also we can put them into a uh, different category based on the location, like we have the axial bones and appendicular bone. So that's based on the location. So for example, this one, okay, well, what kind of bone it is? So there's a pelvic bone and it's uh, irregular. So like this one, uh, finger, phalanges, and there's a long bone, even though it's short, but it's the shape is the shape. So it's phalanges, these are uh, the long bone, and this person actually have six fingers. So these are the phalanges, and these are, we call the metacarpal. So this is still the long bone. These carpal bones, these are the short bones. And this one, scapula, uh, that's your shoulder blade, or, and that's the flat bone. And this one, sesamoid bone. So sesamoid bone is the bone in the middle of nowhere. It does not connect to other bone. It connects to the it's be, uh, inside the tendon. Like your patella, that's the biggest one. Uh, it protects your knee. So these are the short bones. Suit you. Uh, the skull, they fuse together. So when the baby is born, the, to help the baby's head to come out, they make this loose so they don't have this part. And after the baby is born, the first year, they're going to fuse these together, so that's the suture. So the suture, by definition, is a suture bone, because it's, it's as strong as the bone. So, uh, but it also is between bone and bone, so it's also a, a joint. So when we talk about the joint, we'll talk about the suture as well. So the suture bone is uh, structurally highly variable. Okay, let's look at the long bone structure. This is a, a very standardized long bone. You have two heads, so you have the proximal epiphysis, distal epiphysis. So these two heads we're going to epiphysis. The center part called diaphysis. And this part, connecting part, is called the metaphysis. So inside you have the epiphyseal line, and that's when the bone matures, so this becomes a line. Uh, in teenager, in, in kids, this is called epiphyseal plate. So this part was cartilage. And uh, when the bone gradually become uh, more mature, and those cartilage were turned into the 
the bone, so it eventually become the epiphyseal line. And when 100% of them turn into bone, and this long bone won't be able to grow longer anymore. And outside, you have the periosteum. There's the connective tissue, cover it, membrane, cover it. And inside, you have endosteum. And this is where the, the bone marrow stays. So there's a medullary cavity. And in the two ends, you have the spongy structure. We call it spongy bone. And center part is the compact bone. And let's zoom in to look at the compact bone. The compact bone, the structure, the basic structure is called the ostium. Ostium is a unit. It's like uh, you put a lot of straw together and this become a long bone and each straw is the ostium. So it's a unit. And the ostium, the center part is called the central canal. That's where the blood vessel goes through. So if you break your bone, you actually bleed a lot. And this is the perforating canal. This is for the blood vessel to go uh, communicate with each other. And uh, the, the ostium, you have those uh, ring, like a tree ring, called uh, lamellae, lamellae. And the osteocyte, these are the matured bone cells. They stay between the lamellae and lamellae. They, they cut a small, uh, small lake. For, for the bone cell to stay there. So the small lake are called lacunae. So they stay in the lacunae. And this is the osteocyte. These are mature bone cells. Mature bone cells, their main function is they sense the pressure you put into the bone. Uh, so if you, if you like the physical workout, the more physical weight you put on the bone, actually make the bone healthier. Because those osteocytes, they are able to sense the pressure you put on the bone, and they will ask the young bone cell called osteoblast to work harder to put more, more bone matrix on the bone. So they, they form a network. So those osteocytes will go goes through the small tunnel called cannulicuni, connect with another osteocyte, and they become a network so they can sense the pressure you put on the bone. Okay, so that's the uh, long bone structure, that's the ostium, and that's the central canal, and this small uh, cell, these are the osteocyte, mature bone cell. And there's another picture, show the ostium, and that's the central canal. In the two end of the long bone, and you have those spongy bones. So spongy bone, you have a lot of blood vessel goes through. And those spongy structure called trabeculi. So they have no specific uh, direction, not like the ostium. Ostium is very specific direction. Uh, the trabeculi has no specific direction. They like, look like a sponge, but actually they are very tough. So they are able to take the pressure from any direction. And this is the slice for the spongy bone. You see the trabeculi. These are trabeculi. And in the spongy bone, that's where the red bone marrow located. So red bone marrow is uh, the, the hemopoiesis uh, happens. So that's where they produce new bone cell, uh, not bone cell, new, new blood cell, new blood cell. So this is the uh, comparison between the compact bone and this the spongy bone. So, so you see the ostium and the spongy bone, you see the trabecula. Now let's look at the flat bone. So the flat bone, like the skull, is two layer of compact bone and inside is an old spongy bone called trabeculi. And these trabeculi, they, they provide the protection from any direction because we could not predict uh, where the impact to the skull could be. So they, you put a lot of trabeculi, so they are able to take the impact from any direction. Let's look at the bone cells. So the bone cells, you have the young bone cell called osteoblast. So osteoblast are those young bone cells. And their function is to produce the bone matrix. So they will put more bone matrix. If you break your bone, uh, mainly this one, it will put more bone matrix. When they turn old, they become osteocyte. So osteocyte are matured bone cell. And this one is called osteoclast. So osteoclast, its main function is to eat the bone matrix, uh, release bone matrix. So apparently osteoclast and osteoblast, these two need to be balanced. And if osteoclast were too hard and you can lose the bone matrix, there's osteoporosis.
Okay, now let's look at the bone matrix. The bone matrix, you have uh, those fiber, those fiber, and give it a little bit of flexibility. So, uh, and you have the ground substance. And you also have the inorganic uh, component. So a big component of it is calcium. Calcium. So uh, a big the the bone is a big storage of calcium. And osteoclast, when they eat the bone matrix, uh, they can release calcium to the blood. So one function of osteoclast is to maintain the homeostasis of calcium. And because of that, uh, you know, drink milk can help the bone health because of the calcium. And let's look at the cartilage. Cartilage soft bone. So the we talk about this in the connective tissue part. We have three different kind of cartilage, uh, and this cartilage they are uh, a vascular. So they don't have they don't have a blood vessel. So that's where you find those cartilage. So cartilage, the matrix part is mainly water. It's mainly water. It's a vascular. And it's not innovated, so innovation means the nerve touch it. So if you damage the cartilage, actually you don't feel it uh, until it's too late. You damage the cartilage too much. And outside is covered by the perichondrium, so it's a membrane, protect the structure. And it's made of the dense irregular connective tissue. Let's take a break.